Hey there, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. My name is Kay, I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area, and I am here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today we're going to do a video that I did a few years ago, maybe like four years ago, but these are my top five organizing tips like ever. Um, these tips work for most people. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say most people, uh, not everyone, but in my years of helping people organize their homes and have their homes function, these are what I find work most of the time. So when you are organizing your home or starting with a drawer or a closet, you can apply these tips yourself and probably benefit from them. So if you are excited, uh, give this video a thumbs up. Before we get started today, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including entrepreneurship, cooking, interior design, photography, digital stuff, editing, YouTubing, scrapbooking, all kinds of things, and especially interior design. I'm obsessed with the Skillshare interior design classes. I think I've said this in like several videos, but I'm obsessed with Rose Sprinkles courses. I've been like actually taking a few of them over again and I've really been enjoying them. I'm trying to like soak it all in because your girl's not really great at interior design. I'm good at organizing but like design I don't know what I'm doing and these concepts make it easy for anyone to make a space look good. It's so good. You can take classes over again. I highly recommend. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's talk about my top five organizing tips. Tip number one, this is gonna seem really simple and like kind of like, okay, yeah, duh. Uh, just simply have fewer items. <laughs> if you have less stuff, overall, you're going to have an easier time finding homes for everything and actually organizing everything. This is a concept that is very simple. And I often say to people, organizing is simple, but not easy easy. So this is one of the simplest things you can do for yourself is to simply declutter the stuff that's not serving you. I am not the quantity police when I come to your house. I'm like, you can't have that many mugs. It's just, you know, you, you, you got to cap it off at eight. That's not my job. But if, if you need eight mugs and all eight of those mugs make you happy, that's totally cool. But it may help you in the long run to downsize on items you're not actually using, you don't need. I mean, the concept is pretty simple. If you have fewer items, you're going to be less bothered by the amount of clutter around you. And again, clutter is in the eye of the beholder. I totally know that. But the, my top tip basically is just to have fewer things. Just yeet stuff out. Just get rid of stuff. Tip number two, another simple concept. Everything in your home needs a place where you can put it back. A home for everything and everything in its place is something that a lot of people say, um, but I like to think for myself, can I put this back? That kind of language is really important to me because if you can't actually put it back, like if you like, say you get the scissors out or you get um, you know, a dog toy out, can you put it back in its home? If you can't, then that's a problem. This also applies to when you're shopping as well, either online or in person. When you are putting something in your shopping cart, ask yourself, do I have room for this? Where am I gonna put it when I get home? A lot of the things I see when I go to people's houses are they have shopping bags full of new items that they were like so excited to buy, but when they got it home, they either forgot about it or they don't actually have a place to put it or they never dealt with it. So make sure that you're shopping very mindfully with purpose. Do I have a place to put this back? Do I have room for it? Those are very, very important questions you need to ask yourself when you're shopping. But again, apply this to every item in your house can I put it away? And number three, piggybacks on number two, when you have a place for everything to go, when you can put everything away, make it easy for yourself to put it away. And I'm talking about using fancy boxes with lids and uh, putting things exactly in a row when you get to put them away. You don't have to do that if that's not who you are. If you're not the kind of person who's going to be very neat when they put things in a drawer so they like perfectly line up, that's not, don't do that then. Make it easy for you to throw, to put it away, not throw it away, but put it away. If, if, if your home for said item is in a drawer, that's good enough for me. If you wanna like take it to the next level, have it be in a drawer, but with drawer organizers, have it be nice and neat. That's so cool, that oh, chef's kiss, we love it. But like, if you can just get to like in a drawer, just throw it in the drawer, 
that you're, you are winning. Make it easy for you to put it away and also make it easy for everybody else in your household to put things away. Kids especially need an easy way to put things away. You know, I don't think that a lot of kids are gonna be very good about putting shoes on shoe racks if they're too hard to put the shoes on, like if there's a special place for each individual shoe. This is way too much trouble for a young person when they come home from school. Like I know that when I come home from school, I was just like throwing my stuff everywhere and I wasn't like trying to put them into like little individual slots. Just make it easy. If you have to throw, I know I've talked bad about the shoe bin before, but if you must have the shoe bin, at least it's a place where the shoes are. Just make sure that you don't throw your shoes in the shoe bin. You know, the shoe bin, okay, I'm gonna talk about the shoe bin again. The shoe bin, like if it's just a basket full of shoes, it's chaos because like one shoe is at the bottom, one shoe's at the top, you're fishing around. It's not, it's, then it's not good. But for kids, the shoe bin does work usually. They're the ones fishing around, try to find their pairs of shoes. I mean, ideally just a shoe rack, just so they can place their shoes next to one another just real simple, or they can just throw them and they're, they're near each other. Um, again, you know what? I hate the bin. I hate, I actually hate the bin. If you must use the shoe bin, then cool. But like, realistically, let's, let's not do the shoe bin. Okay. Speaking of the shoe bin, number four is something that happens in the shoe bin, which is why I don't like the shoe bin, is you gotta avoid the B and B. What's the B and B you ask? The bottom and the back. Those are where things go to die and get lost. If things are in the bottom, you're not gonna find them. If things are in the back, you're not gonna find them. <laughs> Anytime you hide an item behind another item or you have items below other items, it's, it's going to be chaos, you're not gonna find it. So this concept is especially true with organizing, I find dresser drawers. Like people will use the deepest dresser drawer and use it just for socks, balled up socks. So they've got like five layers of these balled up socks and the, the poor socks at the bottom, they never get worn. They go down there to die. It's real sad. You know, they could be like the cute socks with the little birds on them or whatever. They're, they're, they're just gone. That can of chicken broth you bought in 2018 that's in the back of your pantry will never be found. It's, it's, it's just there to get lost and you're, and you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy another can of chicken broth and it's gonna be waste some money for you. So just simply avoid putting things in the back of each other or at the bottom. So this is a huge, huge, huge game changer. Are you going to be able to use all the space efficiently doing this? Maybe not actually, but this is not necessarily a bad thing. You don't have to fill up all of your empty space in any given cabinet, closet, anything like that. If you are not filling up a space, it's totally fine. Having space that's empty, having negative space is totally fine. It's gonna allow you to see everything that you're storing in front of you and allow you from accumulating too many items for you to keep track of. All right, number five, the big one that I find works for most people, you have to organize for the person you are today and not the fantasy version of yourself that you want to be. What is the fantasy version of yourself? The fantasy version of yourself is somebody that wants to do cross stitch and you keep going to Michael's or wherever fabric stores and you're buying all the cross stitch stuff. You see something, oh, you see, oh you're like, oh, that looks so, I, I really want to do that. But when you get home from work, you turn on your Nintendo Switch, you play rude. You turn on your Nintendo Switch, you play Animal Crossing, you talk to your spouse, you take your dog for a walk, you um, surf the web, and you see the cross stitch and you're like, I'm gonna do that someday. If you wanted to do it, you would do it when you got home from work when you had some free time. That is the fantasy version of yourself. Organize and keep the things that reflect who you are right now. You only have enough time in the day for the things that you have time for. And if you don't have time or the desire, because if you really wanted to do that cross stitch, you would get off your butt right now, go grab it and do that cross stitch. Only keep the things you really, really want in your life and that are making a difference for you and bringing more meaning into your life. If that is not who you are, if that is the fantasy version of yourself, I am so sorry, but you probably will never be that person if you haven't gotten to that cross stitch by now. Just give it to someone who really, really, really wants to cross stitch 
Stitch but maybe can't afford their materials or who isn't old enough to buy them themselves, you know, bring joy into someone else's life, pass it on and make room for the things in your life that really matter to you right now, right now, today. Okay, what'd you think? Are those tips that you can use to organize your home? And we're not talking about products. Products are like totally extra. Um, we'll talk about products actually in another video. I mean, I love organizing products. I sold them for like eight years at the container store, but you don't need them to organize your home. They are the last step on the home organizing journey. You gotta get your head right first and get the things out of your life that aren't serving you and then get to define details. Let me know which tip below was your favorite. And if you have any more, write them down in the comments below. We like to share and learn from each other. So I hope you're all having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.